Are you a survivor of a relationship that just couldn't seem to grow? A survivor of a relationship where you just seem to be this person's emotional punching bag. You were a slave to them mentally. You could never get around to them. They, they just acted like a child that never grew up past two or three years old. They couldn't even take the things they dish out to you. They couldn't face themselves if you held them accountable for certain behaviors. They either attacked you or they ran. It's always fight or flight. If you are a survivor of a relationship dynamic, whether it's parents, whether it's work, whether it's siblings or, or romantic partnership, or even just a friend, where you felt like you had to crawl out of a dark place dealing with this person. Most of the time, your encounters with them left you feeling drained and exhausted. It didn't matter how positive you tried to be. It didn't matter how much you tried to keep the peace you end up getting the short end of the stick because they never reciprocated that type of unconditional love to you. Rather, they focused on your flaws. They loved putting you down. They loved spitting on you while you were down. They couldn't find enough empathy to say thank you or to say I'm sorry and mean it with follow the changed behavior. You survived this. It's not coincidental. Not to label you, not trying to label you, not trying to slap labels on you. But there's a hidden truth behind the narcissist and the empath. Welcome to my channel, guys. This is your girl, Mommy So True. So blessed to see you here. Welcome to the channel to all of my new subscribers. If you haven't already, smash that sub button, hit the like button, and of course, share your comments and your thoughts below. If you need to reach me, if you are interested in booking life coaching sessions with me, please check out the description box for more details and information on how to contact me. In today's video, I want to uncover the hidden truths about narcissists and empaths and how these seem seemingly opposite types of people can coexist in this world. We'll start with the basics. The narcissist, someone who is excessively so into themselves that they could care less about the people in their life. <laughs> you could be a wife, you could be their child. It wouldn't matter to that narcissist. It's all about me, me, me. It's all about taking, taking, taking. Their main interest is in themselves and what they can do to get others to meet their needs and completely focus on their own successes. On the other hand, we have the empaths. This is someone who is very compassionate and have a deep understanding for others, how they feel. They're usually deeply connected to others' emotions. At first glance, it seems like an empath and a narcissist is a match made in heaven. It seems like they're not even really that different. And this is why they tend to attract each other like magnets. The reason for that is in the underlying traits of the narcissist and the empath. The narcissist is obsessed with getting admiration and validation, attention and praise. They thrive on being the center of attention. Empaths have a natural ability to sense everyone's needs around them and have the tendency to want to attend to the needs. They typically have a deep desire to want to help. A lot of times it's at the cost of their own well-being. This is why initially a narcissist and an empath appears to be a match made in heaven. You have someone who is usable, willing to be used, ready to serve, people please. And then you have someone who is ready because they've been waiting to have control and take advantage of somebody else for their own benefit. The narcissist's need for attention and admiration gets fulfilled by the empath. The narcissist is so needy. The empath wants to feel needed. The empath feels good knowing that they can help this narcissist. But this is when it becomes pretty scary. 
because this seemingly perfect match turns into a nightmare eventually. It quickly turns into a toxic, destructive relationship because the narcissist need for constant attention, validation, and admiration quickly turns into an obsessive manipulation game. It turns into a scary world of complete control over the empath. The narcissist preys on the empath's ability to carry empathy and put others first. Over time, the narcissist will start using guilt tripping tactics, gaslighting tactics, emotional blackmail. They can even become physically violent, extremely verbally abusive, and whatever else they can do to the empath to get their needs met. On the other hand, the empath now becomes this emotional slave to the narcissist, trying to focus on the needs of the narcissist. How can I please them? What can I do to keep peace? How can I neglect parts of myself and my own well-being to make sure I can go home to peace so I can sleep at night, so I can wake up and go to work in the morning, so I don't have to have stress over my head every day? This is when the empath starts to do things like walk on eggshells. They start, you know, getting at that gut-wrenching feeling when they're pulling up in the driveway after work because they're coming home to a dark place. They're coming home and the house won't be clean again. They're coming home and the kids are going to not be well taken up, taken care of. It's going to be something that they're coming home to yet again. And the empath starts to become extremely exhausted, drained. Their energy gets lower and lower and lower. This dynamic may seem like it only exists in a romantic relationship, but this can be family. This can be job with coworkers and bosses. This can be friends. This can be anybody. Narcissistic bosses who are, who are constantly putting their empathetic employees down, most of the time because of jealousy, demeaning their work, looking for attention. This could be that narcissistic friend who always seems to turn the conversation back onto themselves because they just love to talk about themselves. They could care less about what you're going through. They want to talk your head off by the time the conversation is over with. Their empath friend is completely drained and, and left feeling unnoticed. You might be wondering, why do narcissists and empaths attract each other in the first place? Well, the answer honestly lies in their childhood and their upbringing. In most cases, narcissists had either overly critical or absent parents or parents who never said no and just let them do whatever so they don't understand boundaries and they, they live an adult life of entitlement. And their type of upbringing led for them to develop a deep need for attention and validation from others. Then the empaths on the other hand often had to grow up taking care of others, often had to grow up taking care of everybody else's emotional needs mostly. So much that they learn to neglect their own needs. And this leads for the empath to grow up seeking validation and fulfillment in relationships with others. And this is why they're typically attracted to each other. Narcissists are experts at what they do because they're so empty and they need people to be broken down enough for them to be their emotional slaves. That's why they've mastered the manipulation. They've mastered the gaslighting tactics, all of the guilt tripping, the silent treatments, all the other forms of punishment that they use to emotionally abuse their victims. They're all tools for the narcissist to maintain or even gain control over other people. Empaths are nurturing by nature, often finding themselves trying to fix or rescue a narcissist. And when an empath has that mindset that they can rescue or fix a narcissist, they pull themselves deeper and deeper in the trap which can lead to codependency, where the empath becomes so enmeshed with the narcissist that they lose their own identity and sense of self. But here's the silver lining. Both narcissism and empathy is on a spectrum, meaning they can be developed or they can be suppressed based on that person's experiences and choices. What that means is we all have the ability the capability to seek the necessary help to evolve, 
to elevate in life mentally, heal emotionally, grow spiritually. And the only ones that typically have that capability, that willingness is an empath. The narcissist won't choose that path most of the time because a narcissist refuses to admit that they are the problem or that they have a problem. They'll be in high denial. It's everyone but them. They're actually quite perfect if you ask them. This is why an empath ends up a winner in life. When they learn to choose themselves, when they learn to prioritize their well-being, when they learn to powerfully disconnect and detach from this control freak, from this, this, this energy draining vampire, when they take their power back and they walk away, they free themselves and they're able to be their own individual self. They're able to learn how to be comfortable and independent. They learn how to set boundaries. They learn how to say no. They learn how to protect themselves because they learn that they deserve better than a narcissist. Although the narcissist may have come off charming with their confidence, their charm, their, their charisma, At the end of the day, they show you they're not a real one. They show you they're not capable of fighting for you, holding you down. They show you they really don't rock with you like that. They really don't love you. They show you they're, they're, they're not your partner. They're actually not your soulmate. They're just after your soul, if anything. And this is the hidden truth behind the narcissist and the empath. Thank you for watching today's video. Stay blessed and stay true, beautiful people. See you soon.